Today, I have a really exciting move. We're gonna learn how to hang upside down for the first time. When you're finally ready to take the leap of hanging upside down, sometimes having an extra security measure that's gonna help you stick to the pole really securely is super helpful so you can get the gist of the move. For example, I'm wearing sticky leggings. These ones have a lot of grip on them. These sticky leggings helps you to learn those tricky moves like hanging upside down for the first time with a lot more confidence. If you want to get some sticky leggings, you can click on the description box below and use that link to get 10% off. Before we get into this, I just want to say please don't attempt this move if you are not strong in doing an upright crucifix on the pole and if you're not strong in your invert yet. You can definitely practice the progressions that we'll go through. If you want to know how to do inverts, I have a video on that on Potato Gem Pole Dance in the YouTube channel and also how to do an upright crucifix. So you can go check that out and come back to this video on a later date. So come down on the floor with me and we can practice the contact points. Contact points are key for hanging upside down with your legs only. You want to be in your regular stronghold position with pole in between your bicep, your outside arm goes up high. If you're going from an invert, you want to lift your hips up nice and high. What you wanna do is you want to be hooking your outside leg, okay? So, I'll show you from this side. When you're in an invert, some of you may know this as a chopper because your legs come out. You want to lift your hips up by pulling the pole down and engaging your core. Okay. Your legs will go up nice and straight and your outside leg will hook the pole behind the ankle. Then you can bring your inside leg behind the pole. So, the pole will be between your thighs. You really want to squeeze your legs together so there's no gaps visible. You can also flex the foot behind the pole too of your inside leg. So from the front you can see the pole is between the thighs and my top leg has the back of the knee, calf and ankle on the pole. And then my back leg has the inside of the knee and the front of the shin here and the front of the foot contacting the pole. If I show you from this way, you can see that there's no gaps visible. This is a great progression to do to start practicing how to hook your legs on and how to securely hold your legs to the pole on the right contact points. What I find is helpful is when we are bringing our legs up after we've done a chopper or an invert, bringing both legs straight up really helps. So rather than just hooking the outside leg and letting this inside leg go to the side, you're bringing both legs up nice and high, shooting them up to the ceiling by pulling down the pole and engaging the core. So, again, you're in a straddle. You wanna bring both legs up, shoot them high to the ceiling by pulling the pole down, engaging the core and lifting the hips up. Both legs come up at the same time to make it easier rather than hooking the outside leg and having this inside leg off to the side and then bringing it in. You can also hook your outside leg and push the pole to help bring your hips up. Okay, but try to bring your hips up as much as you can before hooking your outside leg. I also encourage you to use a crash mat that goes around the pole. I don't have one here with me today, but it gives you that extra bit of security to cushion the blow if you do fall off the pole. But don't worry, we're gonna learn how to fall properly as well. 
before we even attempt it up high. Make sure you know the steps to exit the move before you go up. A progression is to start low from the floor, okay? So your knees are bent. And if you can, you can invert from the floor. Your chin is tucked into your chest. And practice just hooking your legs, lifting them up like so. And releasing your hands. Okay. So I'm nice and close to the ground. So if I do start sliding, it won't be from a big distance. Okay, so just practicing your leg grip from this height and seeing if you can hold it. Sliding down. So with any step in the procedure, if at any point you feel that your leg grip is not holding you up securely, I don't want you to proceed with the next step. Always keep checking in with how your legs are feeling and you will feel it in your body if your legs are not holding you up because maybe your grip isn't too good, maybe you have dry legs like me, or you're just not used to squeezing so hard between your legs and it hurts a little bit, and that's okay. You can condition the feeling by doing the progressions on the floor first. So please, as soon as you feel like you're not secure, Bring both hands onto the pole, keep both legs squeezing onto the pole, tuck your chin in and slowly release. I'm going to show you how to land safely if you weren't on the other side of the pole. Say your chest is not on the same side as your legs, it's still in front like this. So. If we are still here and we're just fiddling around, slowly lowering our hands to get better leg grip and we feel not very secure, that's okay. Our chest is still in front of the pole. We just want to keep holding on with both hands and both legs and slowly releasing the grip, tucking in the chin to the chest. So it may feel painful, but you want to keep squeezing with the legs to slow down your descent. You want to try and land here behind the shoulders, not here or here. So don't look down, tuck your chin in. Another way to land is by releasing the grip on your legs. So your bottom is going to land on the floor first. So keeping my feet on the pole, my bottom lands first. If you're going to land with your bottom first, you can either keep your legs on the pole or you can tuck your knees into your chest after releasing your feet off the pole. So you can release the grip on your legs making the gap in between your legs bigger, sliding your hands down at the same time by releasing the grip on your hands, lowering your bottom, sliding down, keeping your feet onto the pole, and your bottom lands first. You can also release your legs and tuck your knees into your chest, but that takes a little bit more core strength. So releasing our legs, lowering our knees down to our chest, bending by bending our legs, bringing in our knees, ooh, and landing with our feet. So let me go through the procedure if you were to start from a standing position. So you're going to invert, pulling your elbows in, okay? Okay, so here you can see I've pulled my hips up by pulling the pole down and engaging my core. I've brought both legs up at the same time, okay? 
I'm now getting my grip points in order, okay? And I need to start moving my hands down in order to get it in between my inner thighs. So slowly sliding my hands down like this. I'm gonna keep my outside arm on the pole and I'm gonna bring my inside arm to the other side like this so my chest is on the other side of the pole. I only do this if my leg grip feels very secure. What you wanna do is bring your inside arm to your belly and pull your tummy to the pole. Keep squeezing your legs. If you feel secure, you can bring the outside hand to your belly too, okay? And finally, if you feel secure, you can take both hands off, but regrip them very quickly, okay? And then you wanna get both hands back on the pole, tuck your chin, into your chest, start to release the grip on your legs and slowly release the grips on your hands. Okay, keep looking up, tucking your chin to your chest, releasing the grip on your legs until you land gently on your shoulders. So you don't need to bring your chest behind the pole to the same side as where your bottom is. You can just keep your inside arm shoulder in front of the pole using the back of this shoulder to grip and extend the inside arm. Extend the inside arm and then you can extend the outside arm and just stay here. The main problem you will face when learning an upside down crucifix is getting the right grip in the legs. So it all starts right from the beginning when you've gone from an invert and you've lifted your legs up on the pole. You wanna make sure that you are gripping the pole in the right spots. And it just takes a little bit of maneuvering and adjusting to find where those spots are for you. If you have a bit more juice on your legs, like me, I've got some meat there, it will make it easier to leave no gaps in the pole. Um, if you have less meat, you just have to squeeze even harder to try and eliminate as many gaps in the pole as possible. So you really want to slide your hands down slowly as you start to find the right grip in your legs. And throughout the whole movement, you want to be continually squeezing your inner thighs together and squeezing behind the front leg's calf and the back leg's side calf slash shin area and foot, front of the foot, inner front foot, okay? And it all starts from lifting your hips right from the start by pulling the pole down and engaging the core from an invert. So, you've inverted. You wanna pull the pole down, engage the core, lift both legs up, okay? You might not be high up enough at this point, so just keep pulling the pole down and use your legs to pull yourself up even more. You need to start slowly sliding your hands down to get the pole between your inner thighs. This is when you've really got to squeeze your inner thighs together and squeeze the front leg, pushing it back and pushing the back leg forwards. Okay. You can use your inside shoulder as a gripping point and keep both hands on. When you're first learning this move, it's really important to try and keep one hand on at all times. So see, as I move my inside arm to the other side, I still kept my outside arm on. Then, as I'm slowly releasing my hand grip, I've slid this inside arm down to my belly and this outside arm slowly down to my belly. Okay. So how do we add some pizzazz to the upside down crucifix move? This is only for those who are feeling very confident with 
all that has been discussed so far. So basically, you feel very confident to hang upside down with your legs and your arms off and you can land safely. These are some ways that I try to make my upside down crucifix look a little bit more fancy. So instead of slowly moving one arm off at a time and bringing your chest to the same side of the pole as your bottom, you can leave one hand off so your inside arm can remain off. So if I'm here, I can swing my inside arm off, leave it off, and then bring my outside arm off too. Okay, then I can also look up by arching my upper back. Okay, that is only, only if you feel very, sorry. That is only if you feel very confident to hang upside down. So please don't do that unless you are a very strong intermediate level pole dancer who can hang upside down confidently. That's just a little, little tip. Please do not try that first go.